free wood from the trash. You can make a lot of great things using this type of material if you're just a little creative. And I'll show you uh, several pieces of furniture that I built using materials, which is scraps just like this that I found in a dumpster or in the trash. And you don't need to spend a lot of money to build things. So I know that you're going to see in this video, you're going to see maybe some more expensive tools, but they're not necessary to make things with this. And the project that I'm going to show you today is all about using wood like this. It's not about what tools you use today. So let's get started. I'm going to start off by planing the sides of the boards down to take the roughness out, square them up, and remove the round corners off the boards. This is not necessary, but it's going to save me a few steps of sanding. I'm going to use these smaller uh, boards that come from a pallet and plane those down as well. Those will make the braces that look like an X in the middle. You can definitely skip this step and just use a sander to make the boards look the way you want them to. I feel like one of the more important parts of this process is just about getting your wood uh, as twist free and as square as you can. So here I'm just cutting one end straight so I can use that for my measurement. I'm setting up a stop block and that block will make sure that all of my cuts are consistent. On this day my friend Chip stopped by to help me with the project and he's cutting all of the blocks down to 12 inches long. These will be the top and bottom of the legs. We cut five of these blocks. One will be used as a spacer. They all need to be the exact same length. Now we're going to cut the legs at 31 and a half inches long. We're going to put pocket holes in all four of the boards. Now I usually pick the ugliest side to put my screws in and that way they won't be seen. Here we're using the Porter Cable pocket hole jig and what I'll do is I'll put links to all the tools that I can think of in the description below. So if you're interested you can just check the description below to find links to the tools. I'll also try to consider all the materials too such as glue and screws. Now we're going to assemble the first leg. Remember that spare block that we had? We're going to use that as a spacer. First we'll put some glue, and then we'll clamp it. Be sure to clamp, otherwise whenever you start to try to put your screws in, the boards will shift out of alignment and you'll have problems. Notice Chip is putting the pocket screws on the underside of what will be the bottom of the leg. This will make them invisible basically whenever the table is sitting up. We're going to repeat this process on the top only difference is we're going to turn the screws on the top. This will be hidden by the tabletop. Be sure to clamp it of course. One other tip is try to work on this particular part of the project on the flattest surface you can find. That will keep your leg from being twisted. One of the caveats to working with material from the dumpster is it tends to be twisted and sometimes has big knots. In this case, one of my boards had some big knots in it, and so I used some automotive body filler to fill those large knots in, and it worked out really well. Once this body filler is dry, we'll sand it and you'll never know it was ever there. Now just repeat this same process for the other leg, and we'll have two legs. Now we're going to do the X brace. We'll start by laying the board on top and marking it from the other side. We'll transfer those lines onto the miter saw for the correct angle. Just take your time cutting these. Make sure they fit nice and snugly and make sure your braces are square first. Just repeat the same process. Mine ended up being about 38 degrees. Try not to cut off too much. As you can see Chip's going to make several cuts. This will make sure that it's really really close and accurate. Now you're going to see Chip is just going to make some marks on the sides. We're going to transfer those lines down the sides of the boards. We'll use those lines as reference for the table saw miter gauge. Chip is also marking the ends just in case everything's not just perfectly square. We can put it back in the exact same configuration. Sometimes when the boards are a little bit warped, 
they don't like to go back unless you have them in the exact same spot. Now we set up the miter gauge and we're going to use the table saw to cut half the depth of the boards allowing them to lock together. It's important to take your time on this step. If you don't take off enough it won't fit together but if you take off too much you'll have a huge gap and it won't look very well. Once your X is made you can now fit it inside your leg. Be sure to line up the marks that you previously made. This is a real gratifying step especially when it turns out looking this nice. I didn't show the step but I used two inch brad nails to hold this in place. I didn't want glue all over the place so later I took it apart and I sanded the inside real good and then put it back together and put brad nails in. Chip lined up the marks, transferred them down the sides and then used a clamp to hold them in place while we used the table saw to cut it. When you put the marks on the side, you'll be able to transfer those marks to the miter gauge so that you can set the angle properly. This is sped up, but Chip is really taking his time making sure not to go over the lines for the first cut. I think once uh, this is all finished, it'll be very hard to tell that all this material was reclaimed. As you can tell, Chip has some steel-toed flip-flops in the shop today. Let me know what you think about them in the comments below. What kind of shoes do you wear when you're working in the shop or in the yard? Let me know. Now we need to make the bottom shelf. We're going to cut some 2x4s about 1 inch wide maybe an inch and a quarter and then cut each of those at the proper length about 39 inches long and then run them through the planer to get them as square as we can on one side once we do that we're going to glue them together and try to get a really straight surface while the bottom shelf is drying I'm going to cut some pieces for the top those are going to be 44 inches long and run them through the planer I chose one 2x8 and two 2x6s, mainly because that's what I found. But the measurement came out just right for the width of the table. Now I'm going to glue them together. When gluing boards like this together, the more clamps you have, the better it will turn out. Once the glue is dry, I'm going to square it up on the table saw, just making sure that the edges are all nice. Then I'm going to take it over to the miter saw and cut the other edges square as well. And do my least favorite thing sanding. Now I'm going to cut a 1x4 to the length of 39 inches. This will become the apron. This board's a little twisted so I'm going to have to put another board on the back of it to keep it a little bit straighter. We're going to go ahead and assemble that with pocket screws so here Chip is going to drill some holes for that. As you can see I cut another strip of a 1x4 and I'm going to nail that to the back edge. That'll kind of make the board a little straighter. Adding this board will also give me something to screw the tabletop to. Here I'm going to drill some 3 16 holes and those will be used to fasten the top to the apron using inch and a quarter screws. The bottom shelf is dry now so I'm going to use some pocket holes and use that to align and hold the bottom shelf in place. Next it's ready for paint and I won't bore you with the details of all that. It's just paint. It's time for assembly and I'm going to put one apron on first, then the second, then I'll put the top on. Using some screws through the legs I'll hold the top down and then using the holes that I put originally in the apron I'll fasten the top down to that with the inch and a quarter screws. I fastened the bottom shelf using the pocket holes that I previously put in and it turned out great. I think it's very strong and sturdy. And the last thing, I'm going to put screws in these holes that I made previously in the apron. This will give the table lots of strength. Using this exact same method, we made a coffee table, an end table, a side table, and a TV stand. All from reclaimed material. If you like the project, give it a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe for more content just like this.
yeah, yeah. 